Wonderful. And I'll begin to admit now. Good morning. Good morning, everybody, and welcome. Before we begin the program, we will review some housekeeping tips to ensure all attendees have the best experience. All participants are muted upon entry. We also encourage you to keep your videos off during the speaking portion of the event. You will have the ability to turn them on again for the networking portion of the event. You may also want to hide all non-video participants and switch between the gallery and speaker view as you prefer. So if you're not familiar with Zoom, you can hide all non-video participants by clicking the three dots in the upper right-hand corner of the box of any participant that has their video off. And you can also click on the three dots in the upper right hand corner of your own box to rename yourself if needed. And having your, your full name will be especially helpful in the networking portion of the program. Again, you can click in the upper right hand corner of the Zoom window to change your view of the speaker and the presentation. And then finally, you can click on the different boxes you see in the upper right hand corner of the screen to change how, you, how many speakers you see. So before we start the program, I would like to announce that we will hold a raffle at the end of the program for two American Airlines vouchers, courtesy of our sponsor. To be eligible, you must be registered as an attendee in our event platform Ticket Falcon by 8.30 a.m. this morning and also be present during the time of the raffle. So to kick off our program, I would now like to welcome Juan Gaitan, Chairman of the IHCC Board and President and CEO of Monterey Security. Good morning, Liana. Thank you very much for the introduction. Um, I just want to, on behalf of the board, say thank you for this opportunity and um, just take a moment to pause uh, and reflect and celebrate what happened yesterday. Um, what an incredible feat, um, nearly less than a year after this uh, pandemic, uh, a vaccine was created and we started uh, the beginning of the end of this horrific uh, virus and this pandemic, this worldwide pandemic that has affected all of us. Um, and I think uh, we just need to reflect and, and celebrate that. I know we've been sort of numb to what's been going on over the last uh, almost a year now, uh, but I think it's very important to at least acknowledge um, what has happened yesterday and the incredible efforts that were made uh, by so many to, to see uh, the beginning of, of the end of this horrific virus. Um, again, on behalf of the board, uh, the board, for those of you that don't know, is made up of some corporate uh, uh, leaders, entrepreneurs um, from both sides, folks that have, uh, have a business that were under 10 years and some folks that over 10 years. So uh, we all know firsthand what has been um, happening obviously uh, to businesses and we are suffering and have suffered uh, just like all of you during this uh, during this unprecedented time and we've been meeting as often as we can to really discuss strategies and how to help the community at large and as soon as we were uh, on a retreat in fact together uh, we met uh, and came back with a prioritization list and and turned it over to the staff at uh, at the chamber and I just want to really acknowledge on behalf of the board, the, uh, the, the folks behind the scenes, the, the staff at the Illinois Hispanic Chamber that have been working tirelessly day and night to help uh, all of the Latino businesses uh, here in Illinois, uh, whether it's just a phone call, a direction, uh, whatever it is, just someone there, a helping hand um, to help in any possible way, shape or form. And we just can't thank the, the staff enough for being there for everyone here in Illinois. Um, and it's just been incredible to watch and to see uh, them worry about their own safeties, dealing with the loss that uh, so many of us have, uh, 
have gone through with this virus. And they're in there every single day working for a nonprofit like the Illinois Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. And they're just really doing an amazing job. You would never hear them say it directly. So on behalf of the board, I'm saying thank you to the entire staff for implementing a great strategy and working and representing the Latino business community at large. And that great team is really supported by a great leader. And I believe Jaime, Jaime De Paolo has been doing an amazing job uh, representing our community and helping everywhere that he possibly can. And I think the, the mix uh, with Jaime's leadership, the team, uh, the list it goes on and on there. And I just want to say thank you to Jaime, the entire team, and to the whole Hispanic business community at large. Uh, we're going to continue to be here for you. And uh, the first start of, of the end of this uh, started yesterday. So with that, I'll turn it over to Jaime. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you, Juan. Good morning, everyone. It's great to be here in this virtual world. Uh, and thank you for joining us in this great first ever virtual breakfast. Uh, the ICC, I want you to know that we are here and we are here to help and with the support of the board, uh, we're doing it. And we're gonna release some incredible numbers today. This is gonna blow your mind, the amount of work that this incredible team that we have, small but mighty, has done to rescue and help and bring wealth and, and, and resources to our business community that you know, has been suffering because of this horrible disease. And hopefully, like Juan said at the beginning of the end. So I'd like to, first of all, thank our sponsors today, Crown Castle, for always being here, supporting our chamber and always being done, always supporting us and always looking out for a mission. Thank you so much. And also our official airline of the Illinois Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, the uh, American Airlines, thank you for year in, year out support. I appreciate it because of you, we're able to travel and meet and network and bring resources to our community. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. I would also like to thank our Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot for always being there for us and, and, and using us as a leverage so we can get to the Latino business community. And thank you for creating those wonderful programs that assisted, assisted many Latino businesses in our community. Also, I'd like to thank uh, Governor J.B. Prickster that allowed me to uh, answer. Uh, he, he was kind enough to, to allow me for me to interview him and answer and, and ask him some key questions that we really needed to know the answer. So thank you, Governor J.B. Prister. I know you're busy today. You couldn't be here live with us, but he was kind enough to record this video. We're going to see in a few minutes. I would like to really thank the board directors of the Illinois Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, uh, Mr. Chairman Juan Gaitan, thank you for your support all the time, every time. Uh, Arabel, Guillermo, Matt, Milena, Mayra, Ray, Art, Kevin, Richard, Luis, and Socorro. These people you see on the screen, they're an incredible group of professionals dedicated to the mission of the Illinois Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Gracias, muchas gracias for all your support, folks. Uh, because of you, we're going to see this incredible report coming online here pretty soon. In this because of you, things happen and make it happen. Thank you for your support. And thank you for la confianza que me dieron when you gave me this job. I'm not gonna die, I will never disappoint you. 2020 has been a, it's been a bad year of bad news. But today the ICC can show its members, partners and clients the positive and encouraging results of our work during one of the worst years ever, not just for Illinois, Chicago or the country for the whole world. When I saw many of you last breakfast meeting back in January, it seems like a long time ago, I told you this year was going to be a celebration year because the ICC turned 30 years old. But little did we know, we had the pandemic hit us and after uh, March 13, the ICC rallied, uh, reinvented themselves and, and all we did was help businesses. Thank you. And you're gonna see some incredible numbers again pretty soon. Uh, COVID-19 showed the ICC the great commitment to our mission. Our structure is very solid because it's based on, on human values and resources. For that reason, we are here able to endure everything and we can help you more than ever. I am immensely proud of my team. 
which is is mostly made up of smart, brave women. There are they they all have given their best today, and they can probably say, "Si se puede." These incredible people you see on the screen are the ones making things happen. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you, Yvette. Thank you, Sylvia. Thank you, Liana. Thank you, Angie. Thank you, Gabriela, who recently left us, but we still love you, Gabby. Thank you, Danny. Thank you, Juan Carlos. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you, Janet. Thank you, Esteban. Thank you, Marisol. And thank you, Adrian, for all the constant support and dedication to our mission. These are the wonderful people that make things happen at the Illinois Climate Change Conference, not just me. The crisis generated by coronavirus ended up being for our organization a trial of possible actions forecast immediately on helping out small businesses, the backbone of our community. I have always said the numbers are cold, but they are the mirror of the truth. An organization like ours has the obligation to provide transparent information about the use of public, private, donated funds in, in the receives and to report the results at the annual work. 2020 final report can be seen in consultant in the next couple of hours at our website. Because of the ICC technical assistance program, the Illinois SPDC, the Illinois PTAC, the SPTRC, the Illinois Tollway, working in collaboration with the SBA and several banking partners, we helped create and retain over 18,000 jobs, folks. This is an incredible number that the ICC has some kind of impact. This is an increment of 42, 42% greater than last year. We were able to triple the finance assistance and access to capital that Illinois Hispanic business received. We were able to get thousands of our program clients access to almost $88.1 million in finances resources to our businesses, uh, including access to PPP, EIDL uh, funds, state funds, Cook County funds, private funds, municipality grants, including the city of Chicago grant fund. Thank you, this is an incredible number. This is the reason why we're here. Our job is to support small businesses and we're doing it. The ICC has been working nonstop for 100% focus on helping collectively all together. We have worked seven days a week for over 14,000 hours, virtually on the phone, answering emails from smart, for small businesses and organizations that need our help. We work under our, we work under our model and this hashtag, we are here to help. And we transmit that message all the time, everywhere we go, folks, we are here to help. Our job is to help you and to make sure you, you build your business and, and succeed in this business. We took advantage of the time and participated in almost 500 events, ranging from work, working sessions, webinars, and virtual training. Many of these events were in Spanish, designated exclusively to help our business community in their own language. We were able to assist over just under 11,000 members and clients, which means we assisted two clients per hour from March 16th to November, including Saturdays and Sundays and holidays from 8 a.m. all the way to about 10 p.m., seven days a week folks. My team is committed to helping businesses. During such desolated scenario, as I told you from the beginning, my intentions were, were to give you good news. And all of you are here with the positive energy. And because of you here today, we are able to surpass our goals and celebrate our 30th anniversary helping businesses go back. What an idea. We were never thought of this at the beginning of the year. But our celebration today was the impact we had to those businesses. In my mind, that's worth celebrating, folks. Please raise your coffee and let's celebrate this one because this is a great accomplishment for this great organization. This is a year in celebration and I wish we could be here in person and tell each one of you how much I appreciate and thank you for your support you have given the ICC. But in this new Zoom reality we're living, I can only say thank you, thank you, Thank you, muchísimas gracias por todo tu apoyo, muchísimas gracias por todo lo que haces por la comunidad, y sobre todo muchísimas gracias por el apoyo que nos das a the Chamber of Commerce. Merry Christmas to everyone, Happy New Year, 
And as I, I live by this motto, it says, the best is yet to come. Lo mejor viene ahora. Gracias, muchas gracias. Thank you. We will now have an opportunity for some brief networking introductions. If we were celebrating our meeting in person, we would invite everyone at this time to meet and introduce themselves at their tables. But in this virtual world, we will do these introductions in the Zoom breakout rooms. You will be automatically sent to a breakout room and a member of the IHCC team will join you shortly after to help facilitate the conversation. So please enjoy and we will see you back here in the main room soon. Hey, Ed. Hey, Jaime, come on. Hello. <clears throat> Can you hear me? Okay, cool. Um, I think that Hello. Thank you. Is Adrian part of our team? He is, correct? Yes. Oh, I'll be quiet. Oh, okay. Keep getting back from team to us. Hey, Liana, I have been in meetings with all the four people, with members. So should I stay here? Because I disconnected and then it threw me out. OK, yeah, just stay here, please. OK. Okay, I'm putting you in room seven, uh, Sylvia. Okay. Are we still doing 15 minutes or it's gonna end in 10 minutes? Because, Liana, I can't hear you. 8.30. 8.30, okay. You can go ahead and join. All right, so I don't do anything, I just wait, right? Um, can you go ahead and click on the three dots and accept it? I put you in room seven. Uh, three dots on my name or where? Go to the I bottom of the screen that says more. Click uh, um, join breakout room. I don't have it. I have mute stuff, video participants, share, record, uh, join breakout more. room. Yes. More. Yeah. Join breakout room. Okay, seven. Okay, now. Okay. You as well, Adrian. Join breakout room. One. Okay. Yes. I'm going on one. 
Do I also leave Juana? No, it's fine. Um, I The room that you were in, I put Sylvia in. Okay, so we don't need more people? I'm team? going over to check and see. A lot of the, a lot of our members didn't put the IHCC name in front of them, so um, I was having a little trouble. Okay. Actually, I, I'm going to put you in room six. Okay. There's also some people in the waiting room, and Sylvia looks. He's there already. Who's in that room? Leslie. Um, if everybody's in a room, you could just have me as a second person. It's okay, because we don't have. That's fine. Um, I'm checking the rooms, and it looks like. They're all full? Yes. Actually, okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put you in room two. Do you wait? Hold on. Do you mind putting me with Lolly or someone? Because she's very new. I don't want her to be like. Yeah, let me find her. Yes, find Lolly, please. Okay, I'm going to put you in room 10 then. All right, can you plus, okay. Hi, did you guys exit the waiting rooms? Hello? Hello. Hi, were there any issues with the waiting rooms or what happened? I said that you're back in the main stage. Uh, I actually switched computers and that's how I got bounced out. Okay. Um, you can actually go ahead, but if you guys click on in the bottom bar, you should see three dots and it says more. If you click on those three dots, you should see a, a tab that says join waiting um, breakout room. Hi, is anybody having trouble getting onto the breakout rooms? Hello, yes, I was in a, it, I was in a room. Uh, I think it was number 12, but uh, it, I just went out of the room. Can you, okay, so to go back into your room, you have to go, if you see a little, the lower bar, it says more, click on the three dots and then you will see a tab that says join breakout room. Did you find it? Hi, Juana. I think I was in breakout room number one or something, but it kicked me out. Okay. I was where Adrian uh, is. Okay. You so I'm glad he wasn't there. You, okay. I can believe to run.
Bye, Yolanda. I'm going to place you in the breakout room. Right now we are in breakout sessions. Um, I'm going to place you in one of the breakout rooms, OK? Anna. Hello. So welcome back, everybody. We will allow everyone a few moments to return to the main room. And I ask again that for this portion of the speaking program that you turn your videos off and, and your microphones off so that we can focus on the main session. Now that everyone's back in the, the main room, I wanna welcome our, our generous sponsor and, and hear some remarks from Andrea Bradford, Director of Public Affairs and Public Relations at Crown Castle. So welcome, Andrea. Andrea, feel free to unmute yourself and 
turn on your video. We're not able to hear you at this point. Oh, I apologize. Can you hear me now? And I Perfect. actually have turned on my video. Yes, welcome, Andrea. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you and good morning. Thank you, Jaime, and your terrific team for the chance to talk about our strong partnership with the Illinois Hispanic Chamber today. The Chamber does a great job of connecting people and businesses with each other, which is perfect for us at Crown Castle because we're also in the connectivity business. We build own shared communications and it connects people, businesses, and communities. We're proud to support diverse entrepreneurs through our work with the Chamber, with 1871, and our partnership with both great organizations on the Latinx Incubator Program. Thank you to Betsy for your leadership of 1871, and we hope the Small Businesses Initiative powered by Crown Castle remains a resource for all of the businesses looking to digitize and pivot during the pandemic. As Juan mentioned earlier this morning, we're looking forward to when we can all be together again. We know the Hispanic Chamber is a great connector of the Chicago business community, and we're excited about what next year holds for us together. So thank you, and I hope everyone enjoys this wonderful breakfast, virtual breakfast. Thank you so much, Andrea. And now we will hear a special message from Mayor Lori Lightfoot. Hello, everyone. This is Mayor Lori Lightfoot. And I'd like to thank Juan Gaetan, Chairman of the Illinois Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, Jaime DiPaolo, President and CEO, along with his incredible staff. The impact of COVID-19 has been felt across Chicago and our entire state, but nowhere more than in our most vulnerable communities, including many of our Latinx small businesses. Your work in confronting the challenges we've faced over the past year has been tremendous and will be especially important in the coming months as we work to recover from this crisis stronger and more resilient than we've ever been. And we're able to do that thanks to IHCC's quick action in everything from establishing a center for Latinx small business owners through its support of more than 20,000 entrepreneurs, community organizers, and small businesses in applying for various federal, state, and city assistance programs to training dozens of Latinx entrepreneurs at the Latinx Incubator in collaboration with 1871. And as we move into the new year, we need to not only be thinking of the recovery that'll be taking place in 2021, but the recovery that will continue well into the years that follow. And the city of Chicago is proud to be standing with the IHCC to make the investments we need to drive inclusive growth and development across each of our communities, all of which will support our small businesses, generate more jobs, promote equity, and foster new business opportunities. I want you to know that Chicago is with you. And on behalf of all of our residents, I wanna thank you all once again for your support and I look forward to our work together and the many months and years ahead. And please, everyone, continue to be safe. We thank Mayor Lightfoot for that wonderful message to our community. And let's now actually hear from a few of our IHCC members who will share a reminder that IHCC is here for you. Hi, I'm Marta Cerda. We are ASI and any healthcare services. We provide home care, home health, telehealth, and all the services you need to age well and recover well in your own homes, the safest place to, for you to be during this pandemic and always. Hola, me llamo Berenice Tenorio y mi negocio es Nuestra Cocina, el cual se encuentra ubicado en el suburbio de El Grove Village. Good morning, everyone. My name is Alfonso Barrera. I am the founder of Hispanic Pro, the Hispanic Professional Network. Hispanic Pro is the largest network and jobs board dedicated to Hispanic professionals in the state of Illinois. Hi, my name is Lisette Heron, Vice President of Motor Graphics. We're located in Wheeling, Illinois. I would like to take the time and say thank you very much to the Illinois Hispanic Chamber. Hi, I'm Renata Carnero, and I'm the managing broker for World One Realty. We're located at 1839 North Harlem Avenue. 
in Chicago, and I am here today to thank IHCC for their amazing support throughout the pandemic. Hola, ¿qué tal? Mi nombre es Eulalia Marroquín. Soy presidente de la compañía Lalos Mover Team, que está ubicada en la ciudad de Chicago, Illinois. Quiero agradecer profundamente a Illinois Small Business Development Center por la gran ayuda que nos han brindado. I am extremely happy to be able to be a member of the IHCC and strongly recommend everyone that is not a member to be a member. We thank IHCC for their membership and their help with our payroll protection program. Thank you to IHCC. Gracias. Como mujer empresaria, la verdad es que no me he sentido para nada sola durante esta crisis y quiero que sepan que mi mejor aliado durante esta crisis ha sido la Cámara de Comercio Hispana en Illinois. On behalf of my business partners Delia Saboya and Paula Tardo, thank you IHCC. You guys rock, you're awesome, you really care. I appreciate that. Ellos nos han contestado todas las preguntas y nos han guiado paso a paso acerca del programa PPP por sus siglas en inglés. Les agradecemos mucho por su ayuda. De parte de la familia Lalos Mover Inc. I want to congratulate and praise the Illinois Hispanic Chamber of Commerce for being the go-to resource for the Latinx small business community in the state of Illinois during these uncertain times. Thank you so much. Have a great breakfast and happy holidays. Thanks to all of our members who shared those wonderful messages. Now, please enjoy a brief interview Hi. with IHCC President and CEO Jaime de Paolo and our Illinois Governor, J.B. Pritzker. As you can imagine, Governor J.B. Pritzker's agenda is very tight. He was gracious enough late last week to answer a few of our questions. So listening in, these answers are directed to you small businesses. At the end of the day, the Illinois government, the the J.B. Prickster's office and the Illinois Hispanic Chamber of Commerce are here to rescue small businesses. Thank you and listen in. How has it been working in collaboration with the Illinois Hispanic Chamber of Commerce in this complex year, not just in the state of Illinois, but through the whole country? Well, first, I want to thank the IHCC for your ongoing partnership with Illinois and for your steadfast leadership in supporting Latinx business owners all across our state. With Latinx small businesses facing disproportionate challenges due to the pandemic, your work is more important than ever before. In these tough times, our partnership has been essential as we strive to deliver targeted support for our Latinx businesses. Since the onset of the pandemic, we've worked closely with the IHCC on program outreach, including launching over a billion dollars in economic support programs for small businesses and communities. Because of our collaboration with IHCC and Latinx business leaders, we've seen more than $10.4 million in COVID-19 relief grants provided to thousands of Latinx business owners this year. Our work with the IHCC is ongoing and we look forward to continuing to provide businesses with much needed economic relief. What are the three most important things you can highlight that the state of Illinois, along with the ICC, have been doing together this past year. IHCC has been an indispensable partner in our efforts to com communicate emergency relief for our Latinx businesses and communities. Working in partnership with Jaime and his team, we've assisted in many ways. First, equity-centric programs, to assist our hardest hit communities, we've developed our economic support programs that respond to the needs of small business owners today with a continued emphasis on equity. These efforts are paying off with nearly 500 business interruption grants going to Latinx businesses. The grants have helped our small businesses purchase PPE, balance payroll, and afford other essential operational costs. With each COVID-19 program launch, we've used an equity lens to enhance access and eligibility for those left most vulnerable to the crisis and ensuring that business owners, regardless of status, could apply. We've not only made our grant programs eligible to ITIN business owners, but we've also boosted access for community assistance programs as well, 
helping undocumented families apply for federal energy assistance for the very first time. Outreach. To support Latinx businesses, we formed a coalition of partners working to spread the word and assist more businesses to qualify for funding. We've also increased our network of support available to assist small businesses, including funding 42 statewide small business centers, with many offering technical assistance and support in Spanish. And our Office of Minority Economic Empowerment is dedicated to supporting all our minority-owned businesses across the state. Honoring the community. In partnership with IHCC, we were proud to kick off the first ever statewide Hispanic Heritage Month celebration to honor the unique contributions of our Latinx communities. My administration has provided dozens of webinars with business and industry leaders to help small businesses take advantage of COVID-19 specific state resources and funding. Hundreds of small businesses participated in this year's HHM events with webinars focused on how to launch, grow, and sustain success of Latinx owned businesses. And these are just a few of the initiatives we've taken on to better support the unique needs of our Latinx community. It's been a very difficult year for all of us, especially the Hispanic community. What words of encouragement can you give the Hispanic community to this year end? This year has been particularly challenging for our Latinx communities due to longstanding disparities in healthcare system access and delivery. But throughout the pandemic, I've seen that these difficult times can also bring out the best in people. Because here's the thing about Illinois, we know how to be there for one another. I've always maintained enormous faith in the people of this state to do what's right for each other. And our Latinx community in particular has done just that by stepping up in extraordinary ways. Last month, I stood with Tanya Hernandez, owner of Novias Davila in Little Village, a BIG recipient who has made and distributed over a thousand masks to help school children and other members of her community stay safe during the pandemic. For every small business like Tanya's, there are so many more taking heroic actions to help protect our communities. Beyond our emergency relief programs, my message is this. I know we'll get to the other side of the pandemic by continuing to work together. But please continue to protect your neighbors by wearing a mask, keeping your distance, and supporting our local small businesses. What challenges would the state face in 2021 and how can the Hispanic business community be of any help and support? It's difficult to predict, but here's what we know for sure. Our business's recovery is largely contingent on prioritizing public health. My administration has developed the framework to help guide a safe public health reopening through the Restore Illinois plan. Our economic recovery will also rely heavily on more economic stimulus from Washington. This is something I've been loud and clear about, and my team continues to advocate for additional relief for our small businesses. While state-led programs like business interruption grants have helped businesses keep operating, there's no doubt a more extensive federal stimulus package is needed. With that, I'd like to thank the Latinx business community for your staunch leadership and all that you've done throughout this pandemic to keep our neighbors safe. Please know that the state of Illinois continues to stand by you. We remain committed to supporting our Hispanic and Latinx businesses, which we all know are so essential to the fabric of our communities and the health of our Illinois economy. Thank you, Governor J.B. Prickster. On behalf of the Illinois Hispanic Chamber of Commerce members, the Board of Directors, and the team, I want to really thank you for your leadership on this matter and really appreciate all you've done for our business community. Gracias, amigo. We are now excited to welcome a great friend of the Chamber, President and CEO of the United States Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, Ramiro Cavazos. Well, thank you for the pleasure of uh, joining you today. Thank you to the Illinois Hispanic Chamber of Commerce and your great leadership. I wanna start out 
in particular by thanking Juan Gaitan, your chairman of the board, your, your, uh, your volunteer leaders uh, make all the difference in the world. So I wanna congratulate the board of directors of the Illinois Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. I've had the great honor of being with Mayor Light, Lightfoot and of course, Governor Pritzker, thanks to you at, at your breakfast a little over a year ago. Uh, thanks to your great CEO, a wonderful friend and a champion for a small business, Jaime de Paulo. I wanna thank uh, him. Muchísimas gracias, Jaime, por tu liderazgo. Uh, thank you for being a, a, a wonderful uh, advocate uh, on the legislative side for our small businesses in Illinois and Latino and Latina owned businesses, not just in Illinois, but around the country. It's been our great pleasure to work uh, at the United States Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, representing 260 Hispanic chambers from around the country in Puerto Rico to advocate for our 5 million Hispanic owned businesses, our 61 million Latinos and Latinas. On behalf of our board of directors, our chairwoman, Alice Rodriguez, uh, we uh, have a strong partnership with you and it is strong because we believe in each other, we care for one another, and we're gonna see our way out of this uh, pandemic uh, together and come out more prosperous at the end. Latinos and Latinas, especially our entrepreneurs, uh, have seen it all before and are resilient and will be stronger uh, in 2021. In particular, I want to uh, point out that on behalf of our Hispanic Chamber, we've enjoyed working with uh, each of you and your membership uh, on a Minority Business Development Agency grant through the CARES Act. Uh, we're very optimistic that we will provide assistance to more than 10,000 Hispanic owned businesses through this grant. And then we're also uh, gratified that uh, it looks like we might have an additional set of stimulus money within the week, uh, hopefully with bipartisan cooperation in Washington for our small businesses, for our uh, individuals who are jobless, and of course for state and local government. Uh, Jaime, it's my honor to be here with you and Juan and your membership and your great leadership and, and the governor and the mayor because united we're stronger and united uh, we are all uh, Latinos who uh, believe in the American dream. Uh, on behalf of the United States Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, our great staff, our board of directors, and our 5 million Hispanic owned businesses. Uh, we are the future economic engine of America's economy. And historically, over the last three to 500 years, uh, we have built this country and we're gonna continue to be a big part of its foundation as we move forward. Uh, Latinos are a state of mind. I love to say we're Caucasian, we're Asian, we're Afro Latino, and we're from all different faiths and, and different backgrounds and different uh, nationalities. Uh, but those 61 million Latinos in this country, more than 80% were born here in, in this country. And we're one out of every six Americans uh, today living 330 million people total. We're the largest economy in the world. And uh, you know our economic impact is 2.6 trillion dollars. As Latinos alone, we would be the eighth largest economy in the world. So adelante, let's move forward. Uh, vamos a avanzar. We're going to keep advancing forward, working together. Juntos somos más fuertes. Muchísimas gracias, Jaime, to you and the Illinois Hispanic Chamber of Commerce on behalf of the United States Hispanic Chamber of Commerce and our powerful and optimistic and resilient Latino business community, men and women, uh, strong, we will come out uh, at the end of this pandemic with a new economy, a more digital, more technology-driven economy where our reinvention will again take the place of the storied history of this country that we love and adore that has been led for many, many years by Latinos and Latinas. Muchísimas gracias a todos and we wish you all a great day. Thank you so much, Ramiro, for those inspiring words. Before our panel, let's hear one more time from our members who share how, with IHCC support, they have been able to navigate this challenging year. Cuando llegó la pandemia, pues a nuestras vidas y en este caso a nuestro negocio, pues tan pronto como llegó, eh, perdimos casi una una mitad de la operación, pero subimos 
el, el escenario de fitness classes, de personal training, a la modalidad pues de online o de stream class. Y entonces ahorita tenemos una buena parte de clientes en online y como tenemos la capacidad reducida en el estudio, pues seguimos ofreciendo nuestras clases. They were unbelievable. They had several webinars guiding businesses like mine, how to navigate throughout the whole pandemic with regards to PPP loans, how to pay your employees that had any COVID related issues. And not only that, but having amazing creative ideas on how to improve your business throughout the pandemic. We had to pivot during the pandemic and really add more telehealth services to what we were doing so that our home health and telehealth services could be used by a safety net hospital to keep their patients out of the hospital and safely recovering in their own homes. This has been great for the hospital and for us and we encourage you to call us at 1-800-HOME-CARE if you need services during this pandemic or at any time. They have been wonderful from the day we joined the organization. Uh, but especially now during the pandemic, uh, their response has been wonderful. They have reached out to us via phone, uh, email, and just asking us, what can we do? How can we help? At the moment, I had been already applying for the PPP loan, and I had not gotten any response, no help at all from my bank. I reached back to them and I said, yes, I do need some help. And the way that I need the help is, where else can we apply for the PP loan? They immediately gave me the information. I specifically spoke to Sylvia Bonilla and she's wonderful and really appreciate that she responded right away. She told me, don't wait, here's who I'm gonna set you up with, here's the email. And the next thing I knew within six days, from me applying, we had the money in the bank for the PPP loan. So I can't tell you enough how appreciative we are. I now want to invite IHCC's new COO, Hello. Amanda Chavez, to our virtual stage to moderate our discussion this morning, digitizing small businesses in the COVID economy. Thank you, Liana. Um, for small businesses and everyone else, as you can imagine, this year has been about adapting. Technology has been an important part of the shift, but it's not equally easy or accessible to everyone. Today's conversation will focus on the importance of digitizing your operations for small business. COVID has accelerated this trend, and, but in a post-COVID world, some can be left behind. So I'd like to introduce our panel here today. Um, first, if, if you can, if our panelists can take a moment to introduce themselves. Luisa Castellanos, Science Co-Founder and COO. Hi everyone, I'm Luisa Castellanos, Co-Founder of Science On Call. Um, we are the IT help desk for restaurants. Um, we realize that restaurants don't have easy access to technology, uh, mentorship, expertise, and support. So we provide them with one number to call or text 24 seven when tech hits the fan. Wonderful, thank you. Jaime Di Paolo. Jaime, if you could introduce yourself, please. Sorry, speaking on digital and technology. I'm, my name is Jaime. I am the president and CEO of this wonderful organization. I'm happy to be in this panel and not for some time. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Jaime. Betsy Ziegler, 1871 CEO. Good morning, everybody. I'm Betsy, CEO of 1871, proud partner of the Illinois Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Collectively, we put on a program called the Latinx Incubator. Many of you are familiar with that. We share a deep connection and partnership with Crown Castle. We'll talk about that a little bit more. It's a pleasure to be here this morning. Thank you. Thank you all. Um, for Betsy, um, can you explain, Betsy, what is 1871 Small Business Initiative? Sure. And you heard Andrea mention this in her opening comments. 
So for those of you that um, don't know 1871, we sit in the Merchandise Mart and we had this vision a couple of years ago of this opportunity to take 1871 out of the Mart and into the neighborhoods in partnership with a bunch of community neighborhood partners to bring the training capabilities, assets, et cetera, that 1871 can bring to bear out into the neighborhoods to help support many more aspiring entrepreneurs who probably um, may not have had the opportunity to come into the merchandise mark. And so we've been working on that effort for quite a while and thinking about how do we digitize our content? How do we reach as many people as possible? And then COVID hit. And we thought, okay, there's another opportunity here. There are a number of non-tech based small businesses that might be able to benefit from our support. And the nature of that support is pairing up those non-tech businesses with entrepreneurs, founders, technologists to help those come to serve as mentors to those small business owners. And we had a conversation with Crown Castle and from that was born the small business initiative powered by Crown Castle. And we have a number of business owners who are paired up with technology um, leaders to help stabilize their businesses as well as bring them to the next level and help them engage with their customers in new and different ways. So we're just at the beginning. We're in pilot form right now. We're looking to expand it. And if that uh, could be of interest of any of you out there, please do let us know. Thank you. Betsy, can you tell us why is a tech incubator reaching out to non-digital native businesses? Well, I, I think we, we felt like we have this amazing network of talent, whether it's the founders that work with us, the growth stage companies that work with us, our mentors, et cetera. And how can we help leverage that talent, that capability to apply it to a situation where we haven't spent significant time before in this time of need. We, we all share this belief and certainly the IHCC um, lives and breathes this every single day as evidenced by the impact numbers that Jaime shared earlier that we need these small businesses to stay alive and not just stay alive, but grow, expand and thrive. And if there's ways for us to chip in and help in that effort, we um, we, we are taking advantage of that um, in, in, in hopefully positive ways to drive greater impact. Great, that's wonderful. Uh, Louisa, you are also part of the Small Business Initiative. What are the biggest challenges you are seeing small businesses face as they adapt to technology? Yeah, absolutely, um, and Betsy had a explained the small business initiative very well. Um, so we actually are members of 1871. I was part of the Latinx incubator and my company science on call, we support restaurants and retailers. So small businesses that are not startups that do not have technology expertise. And so when the opportunity arose to help those businesses as mentors, as experts in technology, you know, we work with restaurants and retailers every day. We know their problems. We've seen it for a hundred other restaurants um, and retailers. And so we know what resources they need. We know what technology they need. Restaurant people are not IT people. Restaurant owners are restaurant owners. They started that business because they love food. They love their people. They love their community. They shouldn't have to be technology experts. And so we, our company provides that resource on a subscription basis at a price that they can afford for in, within pretty much any restaurant budget. Um, but there are still businesses that may not be able to afford even our services. Typical IT consulting companies, they charge you know $150 an hour. Uh, they don't always understand restaurants. And so we wanted to be that resource for them to always have a number to call or text. That's another thing that we're seeing. Um, restaurants do not always have the time to send an email to set up an appointment. Um, and so we like to make that easy for them. And I think the Small Business Initiative is focused on connecting technology experts and small businesses with the tools that they need in a way that they can easily access it and not have to go through all these hoops and bounds to sign up for some new membership and have to um, change their business in, in any way and provide extra resources. Um, and so, 
I'm really happy to be a part of that and be able to provide that expertise um, to these small businesses. Great, thank you. Hi, Matt, what are some challenges that Hispanic businesses in particular face? Thank you. Uh, first, Betsy, I'm holding the fort. I'm standing here in 1871. Uh, thank you. Uh, everything's good. Everything's in place. So thank you, Betsy. I thought you might be there. It looked, it looked, uh, I figured you were there. So I'm, I'll am i be there tomorrow, but anyway, great to see you there. Thank you. Uh, well, thank you for the collaboration and, and partnership. Uh, it means a lot to us, Betsy. Uh, the work that we have done with the Latinx incubator is just simply amazing, especially this last cohort. Uh, it's just amazing. And, and it's all due because of technology. Uh, the, going back to your question, Amanda, there's a lot of challenges that face our, our business community, especially the immigrant business community are, are a little bit behind when it comes to technology. So it's our job and our duty to introduce technology to them. So the, the, the role of the ICC plays in collaboration with the programs that uh, 1871 has is to take those programs to the communities and actually support small businesses grow through technology. Uh, you know, not everything is Uber Eats. There's many platforms like uh, Ses Mama, for example, was born here in, in, in 1871 and one of, one of the incubator graduates. That's a very inexpensive platform. You can actually make some money and start making, you know, do, using technology to leverage your businesses. And also in, in, the, in the, you know, retail sector, uh, you, uh, teaching businesses to utilize the mailman as a resource, not, not just as a person bringing bills to the, to the location. So we have a lot of work to do, but it is our job to do it. And uh, because of this pandemic, we, we, have, we have a leg up, we have learned a lot, and especially working with organizations like Luisa Castellanos has, I think this, you know, the sky is the limit on this, so thank you. Great, thank you, Jaime. Um, Luisa, what do you think is one thing that small businesses can do to help themselves right now? Yeah, so I would definitely say, um, you know, making sure that they reach out for support. Um, that's the biggest thing. And we've already mentioned a few ideas of reaching out to IHCC, to reaching out to 1871 and the small business uh, mentorship. Um, I know there are a lot of grants out there as well through the IHCC. Um, there's one that restaurants and retailers can apply to and get access to capital to implement this technology. Um, hospitality will not survive without technology. And we know that now. Um, we knew that before, but COVID has accelerated that. Um, and so being prepared to change your business, listen to your customers, ask them how they would prefer to order, what they would prefer to order. And I know it's, it's tough as a business owner myself to change your business based on the current conditions, but sometimes you have to. You have to adapt. You have to shift um, your technology. And so I, you know, if you don't know what the next step is, get help. Um, even if it's calling or texting, that's what we do. We love to help. We're restaurant people, we're foodie people, um, and we want to help. So just connecting with the resources. Um, it doesn't have to be difficult. You don't have to invest a lot of money, but you do have to be prepared to make those changes. Thanks, Lisa. Betsy, what would you say, um about how we make sure that businesses are not left behind. What what can we do to make sure that they're not left behind? Yeah, I think it's I think this is the go local. This is not a this is not a new idea. It certainly wasn't authored by me, but it's this notion of let's 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 um, amplify or accelerate the shop local theme. We're heading into the holidays, obviously, is there a way to support the local businesses more than ever before? There's this um, idea that one of uh, the alums of 1871 mentioned the other day um, when doing a, a similar panel called the circular city. And how do you think about the this notion, you know, with supply chains all messed up all across the globe because of the, because of the pandemic, lift your head up walk down the street, um, the, the World Business Chicago, the IHCC, the mayor's office, they all have long lists of small businesses in our neighborhoods that we can shop at and, and support or be patrons of restaurants, hair salons, um, uh, you know, shovel, uh, landscaping 
um, services, name it. And so that is, um, that's certainly what I'm doing to celebrate this holiday season. Uh, and it, it sounds very simple. It's something that we all can do and, and uh, I would encourage us to do so. Th that of course goes without saying that there's an advocacy opportunity here too, which IHCC does a phenomenal job at um, advocating on behalf of, of the small businesses for you know, major federal and state funding. Yeah, we all have to remember to shop local. Um, Jaime, what is one thing small businesses should do to help themselves right now? It's, uh, you know, Betsy's on the right track here is we need to all support shop local, including businesses. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot cheaper to go buy in bigger stores to, to supply you, you, you know, you, your small stores, but it's also good to support your own. So businesses should be thinking uh, uh, and how to leverage technology for their own use. For example, uh, you know, I, I come back with this mailman thing, you know, this is an opportunity to sell your products through the mail all over the world, not just in your neighborhood. So take advantage of the technology, take advantage of the platforms out there that are gonna help you move that product and use organizations like the ICC and many others to help you with the funding and resources and the knowledge to do so. So that's, that's key too. And remember, we get paid through someone else. Our job is to help businesses rescue themselves. We get paid, so don't worry about that. It's all free to you. Right, and I think it's um, a good takeaway or reminder that we have you know, programs like the Cook County COVID-19 Recovery Small Business Assistance Program to help small businesses in this time. Um, so, well, thank you, panel. Um, I will um, turn it over to Liana, but thank you very much, Jaime, Luisa, Betsy. Thank you so much for your time and your insights. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. For this last part of the program, we're going to invite attendees to another brief networking opportunity to reflect on the panel conversation and share your own stories of adapting through this time. So I will share for everyone to use as reference a few questions that can guide your conversation in your small groups. I've just put that into the chat. Uh, again, you will be sent to a breakout room and will be joined soon after by a, a member of the IHCC team, but feel free to get your conversation started. You don't have to wait for the IHCC team member. And remember to rejoin afterwards because we still have our raffle ahead of us. So now we will transition to our breakout rooms and I hope you have wonderful conversations and opportunities to connect there. Hi, Loli, let me put you in a room, okay? I'm gonna put you in a room, give me one second. Okay, thank you. You'll be going to room 12. Um, did you have an issue getting into room nine? I did. I just was put in this room, I guess. Yeah, you can go ahead and to go into room nine. 
So if you click on the more button um, on the bottom of your screen, you should be able to click on join breakout room. Oh, perfect. Thank you very much. Yeah, no problem. Hello, Angie. Hello. Hi, Juana. It's Angie again. I couldn't leave just the just the session. I, it kicked me out again because I was with another IHC member in the same room. So, okay. I was in room seven with Leslie. Can you put in front of your name, um, IHC, please? Oh, let me see. So, yeah, I, where I do I change it here? You're an IHC member, correct? Yes, I am. Okay, give me one second. I'll, I'll change it for you. Thank you, because I'm not seeing the option. Okay. I'm going to place you in a room. Give me one second. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna put you in room nine. Okay. You're all set. Hello, welcome. Um, everyone at the moment is in breakout rooms. Are you just hopping onto the call? Hello? Hello? Hi, Rich. Um, yeah, hi, how are you? Hi, we are actually in breakout rooms. I'm about to put you in a room because we're in a breakout room session right now. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, sorry, I had an early meeting and I wasn't able to join until now. No, it's okay, no worries. I'm gonna place you in a room. Sure, thanks.
Thank you all for joining, joining us today. We appreciate your time and hope you found our program helpful to you and your business. Please stay on for the results of our raffle. And we do wanna take a moment before we see a video from our sponsor, American Airlines, we wanna take a moment to again, thank our, our sponsors for the event this morning, Crown Castle and American Airlines, who have been supporting our work not only today, but throughout the year. And as we heard, Crown Castle has been a strong partner of both the Latinx Incubator and the Small Business Initiative at 1871, both of which are actively helping small businesses to digitize and take advantage of technology. So I know you're all anxiously waiting for the results of the raffle and we will have those results once we, we see a special video from our sponsor, American Airlines. We all have different reasons to travel, like Jerry, who's heading home to his loved one, and he will see throughout his journey with us all the ways American Airlines shows care to our guests. As part of our clean commitment, we have developed ways to limit contact, maintain cleanliness, and ensure hygiene. This can be seen throughout our airport spaces, including the Admirals Club and boarding gates. While in flight, we also have a modified experience for added peace of mind. And behind the scenes, we routinely clean high-touch surfaces with a hospital-grade disinfectant. We are continuously innovating to ensure your well-being so you can continue to have moments like Jerry's. Because we all have our reasons to fly. And you are ours. You are why we fly. Now I'm going to turn, turn it over to my colleague on the IHEC team, Adrian Rodriguez, to announce our raffle winners. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Adrian. I, I work at the Illinois Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, and I have the pleasure to announce who is the winner for two vouchers, two American Airlines vouchers, and the winner is Sandy Llano, President of um, Sandy Llano and Associates. Congratulations to Sandy. If Sandy is, thank you so much again, American Airlines for this sponsorship. And thank you, Sandy Llano for registering and participating in this event. Thank you, Adrian. Uh, Sandy, we'll, we will connect with you offline to share your vouchers. So congratulations. And again, thank you everyone thank for you. participating. <laughs> Uh, thanks, Sandy. <laughs> Good to hear your voice. Um, and thank you again to everybody for participating in our very first virtual IHEC meeting. Thank you for being here. It's wonderful to see your faces and happy holidays to you and yours. We really look forward to working with you as the IHEC team into 2021. Thank you and have a wonderful day.